get more on that mission, and we can speak now to astrophysicist uh, Sylvestre Maurice at the University of Toulouse. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. Uh, you actually had a direct role in this mission. Could you tell us a bit more about it? Thanks so much. Oh, yes, uh, it's indeed a NASA mission, that's for sure. But NASA was kind to open uh, the payload to uh, international collaboration. And about six years ago, uh, they selected us in France, as well actually in Los Alamos National Lab in the US, New Mexico, where together we built one of the uh, seven instruments on the rover. And the one we have is the one that is at the top of the mass. It's called SuperCam. It's an instrument with lasers and telescope and spectrometers. Uh, it's, it's kind of a neat instrument. We've just finished about a year ago, and it is now on Perseverance. Well, you must be feeling extremely proud to see uh, that liftoff happen uh, this morning. Just tell us a bit more about what, you're, what you think this mission is, is hoping and aiming to discover about the Red Planet. Yes, well, first of all, I, I, it's not, yes, I'm proud and I, I feel better now, by the way. Cause it's not a, a launch, a rocket is never something that is that simple. It could fail, it did happen extremely well, and I'm very thankful to uh, the people of the Atlas V uh, uh, rocket. Uh, this perseverance, it's, it's very new, not so much because of a rover that looks very much like Curiosity, but mostly because of the payload. And we have seven new instruments, they're completely new. Um, and our instrument, SuperCam, is built on it from an experience, an every church from Cam Cam on Curiosity, but it, it, I would say it's new. And it, it, it is a payload that will allow us to pick samples and, and, and really characterize them. This is a written sample mission. That's the first part of a three mission and our project. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our instrument to say, okay, I want to go that direction, this direction. Oh. This looks great. I'm sending my laser, shooting my laser, and say, oh, that looks a sulfate, a phosphate, a carbonate. Let's, let's drill it. And we core it, and we take it as a sample. We call it the cache. We, we call, close it, and we put it on the ground. And years from now, uh, some other mission will come and pick up the samples and return them to us. So it's only the first mission of what we call the return sample, which is the grail of planetary scientists. And do you think we're going to find out that there is or has ever been life on Mars? Do you, do you have a hunch one way or the other? <laughs> You're asking very good questions. Um, I, I'm, honestly, each time we go somewhere, uh, there is a surprise. I think nature has much more imagination than us. But uh, we're ready. We're ready to find whatever kind of life could be, uh, probably some bacteria. Uh, we call that on Earth stromatolites. Uh, they're not, they, they, they could be big, but the traces are probably extremely thin. There's not much left. So it's going to be very, very difficult to find in situ. That's why we bring samples, because in the labs on Earth, we, we have instruments that are as big as a, as a, a house that can go into very, very details. And if we don't find the answer on Mars, we hope we can find it in our labs. Exactly what was done on the moon. I and mean, of course, the moon was not to look for life. It was to look for uh, the past of the solar system, the history of the solar system in the moon, I would say, or the moon and Earth's history. Uh, here, it's life. And it can, I think it can only be done uh, perfectly with a definitive answer in our labs. And just lastly, I mean, China and the United Arab Emirates have both launched missions to Mars in the last few weeks of varying degrees when it comes to the scope of those missions. But why do you think there is all of a sudden all this huge interest in uh, the planet that neighbors our own? Yeah, uh, yeah that's very true. It's not, well, it's not a, um, only now. It's now because... Uh, you can only launch to Mars for about one month every 27 months, every roughly a bit, a bit more than two years. So if you want to go to Mars, it has to be this month, July and, and, and start of August. That was a window. So it makes sense that the three countries uh, got their uh, launch at the same time. Now, why are there uh, so many spacecraft going to Mars? Because Mars is such a unique planet. Uh, you know that Earth, it's a great planet with life, but Earth has no memory. We don't remember how was life born on Earth because we don't, we've lost traces of that time. 
but uh, at the at the contrary, Mars is at the same age, but as as it's an image of our past because nothing has happened in the last three billion years on Mars. So Mars is like a, a window to our past, and that's what makes it so interesting. So you want to do it? Uh, NASA has done it beautifully. It's certainly the best, no question. Eastern Europe, we're trying to team with them and put mostly our instrument. We're building our own rover, but it's not ready to be at the next window uh, in 2022. Uh, China, and we're working with China, it's very interesting, was ready and could launch. And the Emirates, where they have a spacecraft that was mostly done in the US with a payload, um, mostly done in the US, they launched with Japan. It's, a, it's an excellent example of international collaboration. And that's also what makes um, Mars so fascinating is this uh, way we can collaborate all together to explore the past of Earth.